In this video, we're going to learn about the concepts of luminosity and a related concept of parent brightness, and we're going to do some calculations based on these concepts. All objects emit some sort of radiated electromagnetic energy, and luminosity is a measure at which the rate of radiated energy comes from an object. If we have two objects with different surface areas, we can assume that the larger object will emit more radiated energy per second. However, if the objects have the same surface area, but one is at a higher temperature, the objects at higher temperatures will emit more radiation. So we know that the rate of emitted radiation is related to the surface area of the object as well as the temperature of the object. The Stefan-Boltzmann law is how we relate the luminosity of an object to its surface area and temperature. The constant sigma here is the Stefan-Boltzmann constant. It's 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8. And we see that temperature must be in kelvins to use this formula uh, in order to use the Stefan-Boltzmann constant. Now, the radiated power is in watts. And sometimes this may be described as joules per second. So it's the rate of energy coming from the object. So just remember that a watt is the same as a joule per second. In this question, we have an object at temperature T and luminosity L. Then the temperature is doubled determine the new luminosity in terms of L. So what I like to do when I have these types of questions is we have a T and an L, and I can write Stefan Boltzmann law for this first object here. So L is equal to sigma A T to the power of four. So that's using the Stefan Boltzmann law. Now there's this new luminosity, a second luminosity. And so I can take the Stefan Boltzmann law and apply it to the second one. And in this case, the temperature is doubled. So the new one I'm going to call L2, so that's the second luminosity, and we're going to say that is sigma A, because the area didn't change, but the temperature is doubled. So it's twice the temperature T, so it's 2T. Now I can apply the exponent 4 to the 2T, and I end up with sigma A 16T to the power of 4. And I can rewrite this a little bit just to make it easier to see, A T to the power of 4. Well, what is this last three terms here, sigma a t to the power of 4? If I look, that's what's here. So what the question is asking me to do is determine the new luminosity in terms of L. And so I can replace all of these terms with L. So I know that the luminous, new luminosity, L2, is equal to 16L. So as you can see, even doubling the temperature actually increases the luminosity 16-fold. So that power of four, you know, that makes a very big difference for objects and their luminosity. Next, we have the star Betelgeuse with a radius of 3.1 times 10 to 11 meters and a surface temperature of 2800 Kelvin. And we need to find the luminosity. So we know that the area is going to be 4 pi r squared, because that's the area of a sphere. And the temperature is 2800. And we're going to use the sigma 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8. So if we plug all these values into the formula, we get 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8 times 4 pi. And we have the radius, which is 3.1 times 10 to the 11 all squared, multiplied by 2800 to the power of 4. And that gives us a value of 4.2 times 10 to the 30 watts. We want to think what factors affect the brightness of a star or something we're seeing. And there's really two factors that come to mind. First of all, the luminosity is important. So when we're observing stars from Earth, the luminosity is one thing we're going to see. So brighter stars are going to appear brighter to us. But the other really important factor is actually the distance from us. So the radiation leaves the star and it, and it travels out in a sphere. And that radiation is dissipated over the surface area of that sphere. And so the two main factors that affect the brightness of something we see in the night sky would be the luminosity, you know, the power output of the star, as well as the distance, how far away the star is from us. This concept is what we call the apparent brightness of a star. So as the energy spread out spherically, the energy is dissipated. And the apparent brightness is the radius intensity at a certain distance from the object. The formula for apparent brightness is the luminosity of the object divided by that spherical surface area at a certain distance from it. 
So if you want to imagine this is the power output of the star, and as that power gets dissipated over these long distances, we divide by the sphere's surface area, and that tells us luminosity at a particular point. And we refer to that as apparent brightness. And we give that the letter B. We have a distant star. It's measured to have an apparent brightness of 4.5 times 10 to the negative 10. And we know that this star has this particular luminosity. So we want to determine the distance from the Earth to the star. And this is actually a common approach for finding distances in space. So B is given as 4.5 times 10 to the negative 10. L is 8.5 times 10 to the 30. And we're looking for our distance D. So we have the equation B is equal to L over 4 pi D squared. And some people prefer to put numbers in and then solve. This time I'm going to solve for D squared and then plug my numbers in. So I'm going to isolate D here. So I'm going to multiply both sides by D squared. And simultaneously, I'm going to divide both sides by B. So I end up with D squared being equal to L over 4 pi B. And then I take the square root of both sides. And the, what I will plug into my calculator to do the calculation will be the root of 8.5 times 10 to the 30 divided by 4 pi. That's 4.5 times 10 to the 10. And we get a value for D of 3.9 times 10 to the 19 meters. So that's the distance from the Earth to this particular star. We have a star A with a luminosity L, and it's a distance D away from Earth. Star B has luminosity 3L, but the same apparent brightness. Determine the distance to star B in terms of D. So I want to take my star A and write out an equation for star A. So star A is going to tell me that B is equal to L over 4 pi D squared. So I'm using the apparent brightness formula, and these are the values that I was given. Now star B has the same apparent brightness. So I can use the same letter here. I'm going to use B. We know the luminosity of star B is 3L, but the distance is not the same. So we have to use a different variable, 4 pi, and sometimes I'd use d2 or something like that. Or you could use x up to you. But now what I want to do is I want to get uh, d2 in terms of d. The one clue they gave me in the question is that the apparent brightnesses are the same. So actually I can equate these two different equations here. So I have l is equal to 4 pi d squared, and that's equal to 3l. 4 pi d2 squared. What I can do is start dividing out things that are the same on both sides. So the, the terms for L will cancel out as well as the 4 pi's. So really what I'm left with is 1 over d squared is equal to 3 over d2 squared. And if I cross multiply here I get d2 squared is equal to 3 d squared, and then I will take the square root of both sides, so I end up with d2 is equal to root 3 times d, and I can simplify that as a decimal if I wanted, um, so I could say the distance to the second star is equal to 1.7 d. Alright, in summary, there's a few things we want to keep in mind here. We know that luminosity is the radiated power from an object. Now we want to know that the step, one thing we want to keep in mind is that the Stefan-Boltzmann equation, this equation, this applies to black bodies. So black bodies are objects that absorb and emit all forms of radiation. And so they're theoretical objects. Stars are really close to black bodies, but most other objects, they don't quite emit that much power based on their area and temperature. Um, but for the Stefan-Boltzmann law to be useful, we use it for only black bodies. And the second thing is for the apparent brightness, we just want to keep in mind that this D here, that's not the radius of the object, that's the distance from the observer to the object. So that is a distance, not a radius of the object. Okay, so that's how we use luminosity and apparent brightness to solve problems involving thermal radiation.